Kat, so awesome to have you here. And I want to share from my heart that um, uh, we, um, like, we, we haven't met in person. I know that you part of this amazing organization, Human Awareness Institute, which we both love. That's what we have in common. And then when I looked at what you are passionate about, the sacred sexuality just so spoke to me and how you're passionate about women connecting to their bodies, like not shaming bodies, being like very open about sexuality. It's just, oh my God, this is music to my ears. I wanted to talk to you and ask all of the questions. So welcome. So good to have you here. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah. And could you share in several words about yourself? Um, if you really knew me, my life has been centered around my daughter. Like I love her so much. Um, and she's grown and I'm having to stop centering her because that's smothering. And I have to like find my own, uh, my own center, my own, like, where, where do I go from here? And um, I've been a massage therapist. I didn't tell you this before, but I fell and broke both of my arms a few years ago. Um, oh, wow. So I had to stop doing massage for a minute and that's how I became a teacher for a little bit. And um, that actually, that, being a high school teacher for a couple of years helped me like uh, prepare lesson plans. And like, I think it's preparing me for the things I'm gonna be teaching in the future uh, to women. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, um, and I, like, my purpose in life, uh, for me, has always felt like creating safe space for people. Like, I want people to feel like they belong, and like, they're valued, and they're loved, and, and like, it's okay to be who they are, and their unique diversity, and not be judged, and not be afraid, you know, like, so, um, holding safe space for people is like, it's, that's my passion. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's an amazing passion to have. That's, that sounds wonderful. I want to start with something that I'm so excited, and I know it's a big topic for so many women, the body, accepting body, loving body. I, like, you know, working with women, like I spent the past year, I was lucky with like when COVID started, like with my online course for women, I, I interacted with a lot of women and it keeps coming back that body like not accepting my body not liking my body maybe having belly shape changed after having birth or someone like maybe used to be skinny and then like um, gain some extra weight and like not feeling comfortable so what is your like what is your approach how are you working with this what is your you know message for women who are struggling with like loving their body accepting their body definitely well so um just a little bit of my history um i grew up uh i was a little athlete and totally confident in my body till i was about 10 and then okay. i started reading like girls magazines and women's magazines and increasingly felt ashamed of my body and like i had to change it so that i could be loved so that i could be attractive and like even when I was a skinny little kid, I was like feeling so much shame about my curve, you know, the curves that were starting. And like, I always had a little belly bump and like, I hated that part of my body. Like I could not get rid of it, right? And so then when, when I was pregnant with my daughter, um, two things happened. One is I started loving my belly because that's where she was growing. Oh. And the other part was, I realized that if I was going to love my baby the way I, I, I needed to love her, I had to start loving myself. And like up to that point, I didn't really love myself. I was, I thought it was embarrassing to love myself. I thought it was embarrassing to even like, you know, like it felt arrogant to me to, to say there were great things about me, you know? And so that started me on my self-love journey. And, um, when Annie was about two, I fell into the world of size acceptance is what it was called back then. And, um, or discovered, not just fell in, dove in. <laughs> um, 
And one of my friends, I was going to show you this, uh, is Marilyn Wan, who wrote this book, Fat So, because you don't oh my God. apologize for your size, right? And so I started going to uh, conventions um, with the group called NAFA, the National Association to Advance Fat Acceptance. And then there was another group that partnered with them called ASDA, which was the Association for Size, Diversity and Health. Mm -hmm. And um, they promote highs, which is health at every size. And one of the people that helped found that group, Lindo Bacon, um, wrote a book called Health at Every Size, which, which you needed the surprising truth about your weight or something like that. And like being immersed with these people and understanding how harmful dieting is, like I started to think of dieting itself, any intentional weight loss as an eating disorder. Like, it's one thing to want to choose healthy foods and eat healthy, but if somebody is focused on their weight, it's not a it's not a healthy eating program. It's a eating disorder, because they are they are abdicating the love of their body, the naturalness of their body to public opinion, right? And um, there is another resource I want to mention. Um, there is a woman named Reagan Chastain who writes a blog. She's a professional dancer and she's, and I use the word fat because um, uh, I think overweight and obese are judgmental terms and also unfairly pathologize fat bodies because not everyone who's fat has health issues, you know? And, and health, health issues strike, like diabetes strike people of all sizes. And we don't need to be judgmental about, you know, people who struggle with any, for, any form of uh, disease or, or challenge in their bodies. You know, it's like they have enough on their plates. We should be loving them and supporting them more, right? But anyway, um, Reagan writes a blog called Dances with Fat. And I think it's danceswithfat.org. And oh like God. the blog is so well worth reading because she like, she's fierce. Like she takes that and, and she wrote about how she did an informal study, but in this informal study, women, well, people in general receive like 380,000 negative messages about our bodies every year. Ooh. Like if you're just paying attention, because sometimes you don't even pay attention, you're in the grocery store or whatever, and the radio is playing weight loss ads. You know, there's always something telling you you're not okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, so she like fights that and she like tells you how to set boundaries like at holidays, like, you know what, if you want me to come to the holiday, uh, we're not going to talk about what I'm eating and my weight isn't going to be discussed. And so like by, by reading stuff like this and hanging out with this group of strong women, like I started like just being fierce in my love of my body, you know, and fierce in love of you know like helping other women to love their bodies because we are miracles you know and yeah. there's no reason no matter you know like so my belly it still looks like I'm pregnant I love my okay. belly I don't you know I'm not going to be I refuse shame I refuse to sit in shame because of my natural body and I refuse to try to control the size of my body with um yeah. with anything for any reason you know like i take care of my body i eat healthy foods and i exercise and i'm active and you know i love to dance and i love to ride my bike and but it's not about the size and and also yeah. i don't want to be with a man who or woman whoever i don't want to be with a lover who doesn't like love me just as i am like, I don't even understand that. Like, oh, this guy's going to like you if you lose 10 pounds? Because I see this kind of conversations on online. And I'm like, why would you want to be with somebody like that? Yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering, it, it sounds like you're at this point that you look in, in your mirror, like you look in the mirror, you see your belly, and you genuinely, authentically love in it. Like, you're like, oh, I love your belly how like what would you recommend for a woman who is not in that place yet like for a woman who looks in the mirror and she's like ah, belly or like oh breast or 
you know, whatever, like arms, legs, like for a woman who looks in the mirror and like, what would you recommend for, for those so, of us? Um, there's so many body positive and fat positive resources now online. Like, okay. first of all, like make an agreement with yourself that you're not gonna be critical of your body. Just like make that agreement. And then if you catch yourself doing it, stop. Also don't be critical of other people's bodies. Look for the beauty, like especially in women that are fatter than you. And, and that goes with any size because like if you can find beauty in the fattest woman, then, then you're gonna have a greater chance of creating that space for yourself to find your own beauty. And also, if you can't find that beauty, you're never going to be thin enough to feel safe because you're buying into the lie that you have to look a certain way, right? So also, like, look for resources like, for example, Substantia Jones is a photographer who does amazing work. Um, I think her website is called Add a Positivity, but it's like fat positive and uh, um, she does beautiful fat nudes. So like I spent a lot of time just appreciating different bodies. And then like another thing I really encourage people to do is just to spend time in the mirror, make it if you can and just appreciate your body. Like so many of us, if we look in the mirror, it's just like a judgmental kind of quick, is anything wrong look instead of a, I love you this is, you are amazing, you know, like, spend time, like, you know, in the mirror exercise, and hi, they do five minutes in the mirror saying, I love you, looking in your eyes, expand that to your whole body, like, I love you. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah and, and it's just, touch it's, your arms and your, you know, everything, just touch everywhere. Yeah, just looking and touching and like loving yeah. yourself, getting into that space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like the, you know, like how you say we receive the messages, like the whole media um, is kind of like showing us a certain size that like this is how a person, a woman has to look. Yeah. And this is like we compare ourselves to those like unrealistic, you know, like 5% or whatever percent like models, right? And then I know that um, men, like like men claim, like um, many men I asked, they claim like they're being visual. Again, it's not for all men, but like I ran into it that like men, like their attraction is visual. And there are men who love um, bigger women, who love fat women, but they're ashamed of it. So they're trying to hide it because like the whole, you know, like the whole message is like, oh, like everyone has to be skinny. So I love your approach that it's like, just accept who we really are. Yeah. And it was comforting for me um, to know that there are men that, that prefer bigger women, but, but also there's also this part of me that's like, I don't care if I have anybody's approval. Like I need <laughs> to own my own value. And it can't be about if somebody else finds me appealing. I mean, yeah, it's it's nice to have outer confirmation and validation, but I want to be so strong in myself. And, and I do that by countering society's messages, by reading inspirational books like, like Shadow on a Tightrope, um, written by the Fat Underground years ago decades ago, um, like women who get angry about fat hatred and fat phobia and the way fat people are treated, like I really wanna, I hold on to that anger a lot because it drives me into um, really celebration of all people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 